Am I recording? Is it good? Is it going? Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Okay, hello! Welcome to the Freakish Lemon video podcast thing. I am your host, the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use male pronouns. I practiced that part and I've forgotten what I say next. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Ravelry, and Instagram at Freakish Lemon. And the show notes for this episode will be found at my blog over at FreakishLemon.com. If you are new to my video thing, welcome. And if you are returning, thanks. I know it's been a trial. It's gonna be even more of a trial today because I don't know if you're able to tell in this video, but this is a new camera. I got a raise at work, and the last time I bought a camera was... We were in the single-digit aughts. Was it 2009? Something like that. It was while I was in college, and I graduated college in 2010, so... It's been a while. Thought I'd treat myself to a new camera, uh, which has a little flippy video... Uh, view screen thingy over there, so if I'm distracted and looking off to the side, I'm seeing my stupid face do things on the little view screen, so I know where I am in frame and if the camera's in focus. Also, uh, I got lights, cause I went a little crazy with the Amazon cart button, so I do have continuous lighting, which is exciting. Uh, but I also do have finger shadows, you can see, on my face. So if that becomes a problem, let me know in the comments, because I'm trying not to look at myself while I'm actually filming. Yes. So we'll see how this new camera goes. I have to stand much closer to this camera than my old camera, because it's got a crazy awesome telephoto capability, so I'm, like, right up in the lens right now. Like, it's less than an arm's length away. So it'll take some getting used to. So forgive me if I seem scattered and ridiculous. Uh, although, really, how is that any different from any other video I filmed? Scattered and ridiculous. That is me. Okay. Stop talking to myself. I should talk to the camera. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, I finished a thing. Well, I made a thing. I say finished. It took me an afternoon to do. Um, but it doesn't fit into any of my categories, so I'm going to show it to you now before I get into my different segments. Ugh, I have to be so close to this camera that all my stuff is spread out throughout the room, so I'm gonna be ducking in and out of the frame a lot. I'll try to edit some of it out, but I mean, that's a lot of work and I don't want to do it. So I made a thing. I made many things, actually. I made felted dryer balls, uh, which are really easy to do. You get some 100% wool, you wind them up into little balls, you tie them individually into their own pockets in a set of cheap pantyhose. I bought mine at the dollar store. And then you throw them in the wash, preferably, preferably with something heavy. Um, I did one cycle through with a pair of jeans, went through the dryer twice with the same pair of jeans, um, cause my dryer is not that great and sometimes you have to go through the dryer cycle twice in order to dry things, even on like a half of a full load. Um, so yeah, and then I washed them with another pair of jeans afterwards and dried them a couple more times and then took them out of the pantyhose and let them go through the dryer a couple times just all on their own. So I have a set for black clothes, colored clothes, and white clothes. Uh, most of my clothes are black or navy, navy blue, but like if I'm doing a load of colored t-shirts, uh, I'll use the light gray ones, and for white clothes, I use the white ones. Um, and I mean, I made them on a whim just to see how they were different from dryer sheets, and I actually like my clothes better dried with the wool bar balls wool balls than the dryer sheets. Um, they feel softer when they come out of the dryer, which is nice. Uh, also cuts down on trash. So that's always a plus. 
but since there was no actual crafting involved with that, other than winding a ball, I didn't know where to put it. So there you go. Felted dryer balls. On to the next segment, which is stuff on sticks. I have a finished object, well, I have several finished objects, but I have one finished object here for stuff on sticks. It is my Age of Brass and Steam kerchief thingy. Let's see, can I step back? You can see how big this is? Oh yeah. The lens on this camera is awesome. See, you can see it's nearly my total wingspan here. Um, I did one more set of the, um, because the pattern calls for stocking it up until the eyelet rows and you end up with three eyelet rows in the pattern, I went on to do a fourth eyelet row to use up the yarn. Am I in focus? Am I in focus? I'm not really in focus. Are you refocusing? Yes. Okay. So this is my 100 Ravens yarn uh, in the Rohan colorway, my Lord of the Rings yarn. Stop looking at the little screen. Look at the lens. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's uh, merino wool, and I've been wearing it a lot in the morning um, when I go to work because it's still chilly uh, between, you know, 30 degrees and 40 degrees when I go to work, but it's warmer by the time I get to work because I have an hour commute. So <laughs> this is nice to have in the morning when it's still chilly when I leave my house. And um, where's my thing? I knit this on US 4. 3.5 millimeter circular needles, um, which is smaller than what the pattern calls for, but I think the pattern also calls for a DK weight yarn, and this was a fingering. So, yep, so I finished that, and I love it, and I look like such a hipster in it, but I think I might make another one with the other Lord of the Rings yarn. Not Age of Rice and Steam, but um, another triangle kerchief thing. So I have a couple of hipster options. I also finished a small cable knit um, key card holder. I make these for people at work um, for five bucks because everybody's losing their key cards unless they're attached to them. So I make these little key card holders and I'll show a picture uh, here so you can see what that looks like. It's for the same coworker who did the um, fingerless mitts and the hat in that color yarn. Um, so she was real excited to have it for her key card hold holder as well. I also finished another hood scarf commission and I finished another fingerless mitts commission using a modified version of the giving is receiving um, fingerless mitts pattern by Uma Padu on Ravelry. Um, I'm not going to go into the details about those because I think I've shown a pair of those on this video podcast series every time I've made one because everybody at work decided they wanted some of those things. But those are the last of my workplace commissions, so you won't see anything for workplace people until much later in the year, probably. So that is very exciting that I finally finished that list and I can actually work on stuff that I want to work on. I'm sorry if you could hear the motorcycles going by outside. There's a biker bar a few miles down the road. So we get a lot of motorcycles. Works in progress for the knitting. I'm still working on my Christmas socks. I've turned a heel and I'm working on the foot now on this pair of socks. And I'm still liking how this Christmas yarn is striping up. This is the Red Heart Heart and Soul with Aloe. Um, and there's still not... Well, there's some exact color repeats now, but it's, it's interesting that some of it seems to be random, but some of it is um, repeatable, or easily repeatable. Um, but yes, so I'm working on that. Uh, that's the Soldier Socks pattern by Jessica Day George on US1 2.25 millimeter aluminum DPNs. And this is a trick that I've picked up recently um, because 
recently I've been having a hard time with keeping stitches on my aluminum DPNs when they're just jostling around in a bag uh, for multiple things. I don't know why I suddenly have this problem, but I've started putting uh, rubber bands on them to keep things from sliding around. Uh, so I know there's um, DPN holders. There's some really cool ones out there that people make and there's some, you know, cool ones out there that companies sell. But if you're cheap and it's not in the budget, rubber bands are great. Especially for something like socks, because this is just one rubber band. So, you know, I'd take it off the needles, put it on my wrist, and then when I'm done with the sock, I just put it back on. I also started a pair of leg warmers. I finished one. So here's one leg warmer. Uh, it is the leg warmers pattern by Jane Richmond on Ravelry. It's a free pattern because it's basically a two by two ribbed tube. There's no shaping or anything, just a tube. Um, and I'm using Loops and Threads Impeccable, which is an acrylic yarn, but it was cheap, so I have it. And I'm using the uh, teal color and the aqua color. That's the aqua. And I am on, whoops, knocking things over all over the place. I am on my second leg warmer. And this is a little Kamina phone charm from Tengen Topagur and Lagen uh, that I recently found. So I thought I'd stick it on here as a progress keeper. Um, so I can measure the middle from Kamina to the end to find out where I need to start doing my color rows again. I'm using US 8 5.0 millimeter DPNs. And again, here's the rubber band trick. This one has, because these are fatter needles, two rubber bands, one on each end, to keep everything from sliding around. Um, and I decided to make some leg warmers because the past couple winters we have had really, really bitterly cold Februaries in Connecticut with high winds. And uh, this year especially, um, because it got so cold so fast and the winds picked up so fast, uh, my legs from the knee down were completely chapped uh, because the wind would blow right through my work pants. Everything else I can layer up, I can have a, a long coat, I can have layers up here, but it's warm where I work. My coworkers would not agree with me, but I can't layer my legs at work without being a huge hassle. And after this winter, I need something that I can put on under my work pants to keep the wind from blowing right through them because I work in Hartford. So, you know, if you're in a city in the winter, the wind just magnifies through the buildings and it's terrible. It just blows right through my work pants. My legs were completely chapped up. It was terrible. So I'm making a set of leg warmers that I can put on under my pants and then take off when I actually get to work and I'm sitting at my desk so I don't die of heat. Uh, and I put that in my bag that I showed last time that I made, um, the floppy one with no interfacing in it. But this is a good size. I can fit both the, um, both the skeins of yarn in here and the project. So it actually worked out well this bag. I wasn't sure if it would. And I also started another pair of socks. But this is unusual because while I'm sticking it in the stuff on sticks section, it's not actually on knitting needles. A couple of Christmases ago, my mom bought me a sock loom because uh, she thought that would be a cool tool that I'd want to try. And this past Christmas, my friend Lainey bought me this book, Loom Knitting Socks. 
So I decided to try uh, a pair of socks from this book, the single rib socks. It's a basic sock pattern on my sock loom. Uh, didn't get very far. It's a little slow going, but I have a bit of the cuff. Um, and this is with loops and threads, luxury sock, um, in the colorway Canyon. What is it made out of? It says cashmere blend. Oh, there we go. 60% fine merino superwash wool, 30% nylon, 10% cashmere. And, oop, and that's the color. And here are my stitches. I can't really tell how well this is going to go. The pattern calls to cast on 64, but this loom only has 60, so I cast on 56. Um, but it seems really stretched out on this loom. I'll see where I am once I get further along in the cuff to see if I actually like it. But um, it's an interesting experiment. I can always rip it out if I hate it and make a pair of socks on some needles. But I figured I'd give that a try. We'll see. I mean, it is slow going on the sock loom because you do have to pick each individual stitch and take it off the little peg and put it back on. Um, but I'm starting to speed up with it. I'm just not sure how the fabric's going to turn out. Um, but I also think part of my problem might be the space between the pegs. I think I think this book was really written for a sock loom that had pegs closer together for that weight of yarn. I don't know. It's an experiment. And that's it for stuff on sticks. Now it is time for stuff on hooks. I do have a couple of finished objects in stuff on hooks today, um, which is surprising because the things that I have been working on are larger projects. It's neither one of those. Uh, I was part of the, reach over here and grab it, Little Bobbins Knits Cup Cozy Swap. So I decided to crochet a cup cozy for a partner. Now I tried the pattern first with, I think, the hook that was recommended. Um, and it's the Mug Cozy pattern by Lisa Charbonneau. Um, and I used that Loops and Threads Impeccable Acrylic Yarn in teal because my partner's, uh, one of my partner's favorite colors was teal. And this is the first attempt. It's a little big. This is a big mug. Um, I will compare it to this. It doesn't look that different on the, the screen there, but this is a much smaller mug. This is my, my cup cozy I got from my partner in the swap. But this one I felt was a little big, um, so I did a second one with a smaller needle, I did, er, needle, hook. I did this one with a size J 6.0 millimeter hook, I did the other one in a size I 5.5 millimeter hook, and I gave her a pink and kind of brass button uh, for hers. It fits a, a much more standardized mug. This is kind of a big mug. And you can see how far in the button has to go <laughs> in order for this to, uh, to work on there. And it was an easy pattern. Um, I mean, it's basically a rectangle with a smaller rectangle that has a buttonhole. And then you do a crochet border. That was fun and I sent it off to my partner, and I can talk about it now because we confirmed this week that we each received each other's packages. Um, so my notes were pretty vague there for a while, just a mystery. So I didn't want to show everybody before she got her package. She lives in Scotland, so... It took a while for it to get there. But yes, and this 
yeah, I showed it up for comparison. But this is the one she sent me, which is Knit. And I really like it. It's lovely colors. My mom was tempted to steal it uh, when I got it in the mail. But yeah, so I finished two cup cozies. One for myself, because why not? And one for my cup cozy swap partner. Same yarn, it's just change the hook size for the size of the cozy. I'm still working on my black floor poof thing. Where did that bag go? I've lost it. There it is. There's too many things scattered around right now. Here it is. It looks uh, about the same as the last time I showed you. Probably even less. Because I found out that when I was joining the round up the side, I was accidentally adding a stitch. So it wasn't staying the same stitch count all around. So I had to rip it all back um, to the circle increases. Thankfully, I put a stitch marker there. And I had to start the sides over. Um, I'm doing this uh, with a J size hook, which is a 6.0 millimeter. I, think I feel like I'm spending not enough time actually looking at the camera. I'm just looking at everything else in the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really kind of scatterbrained trying to manage everything with this new setup, which is a terrible setup right now, and I gotta figure something else out. But, um, yeah, so it's just single crochet US. Um, I think it's a double in UK. Um, with this mystery black acrylic yarn to bust some stash. I'm just kind of taking my time with it. I'm not in a hurry to get this finished. But I have made a lot of progress on my bust and stash granny squares. I have done all of these in the past two weeks while watching Flash, Arrow, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I also... Uh, went up to the craft room with my mom because she was putting together um, colors to go together for blankets because she has a lot of acrylic stash up there, about 20 years worth of acrylic stash up there that she just hasn't done anything with for years and she loves making blankets. That's her best thing that she loves to do. She's quick with them and they always look great. So. Uh, we were digging through and I took a bunch of scraps because I mostly have browns and gray. So in order to get some rainbow action, I stole some scraps from my mom and I did a bunch of squares. They're on these rings so I can show you which ones I did new. And I'll take them off the rings and dump them into the bag now that I've shown you. And this is using a US size H. 5.0 millimeter uh, rosewood hook. Um, and it's based, it, I don't think there's really a pattern, at, I mean, there's probably a pattern out there for it. There's only so many ways you can make a square. But uh, it's based off of the granny squares that I've seen on Attic24's blog, um, which is a blog that I really like for crochet. And I do want to try um, one of her granny stripe blankets. But I think what's going to happen is I think I'm going to cast on, cast on, I'm going to start the um, Weekender crochet hexagon thing that Danny's been doing over at Little Bobbin's Knits podcast because that looks amazing. And I need more modular freaking blankets in my life, right? I know I'm going, I know I'm going to start it. Probably even this weekend while I'm editing this video. I'll probably start it. And then I'll have this, and then I will probably soon be starting a Cozy Memories sock blanket knit thing. So I'll have three blankets in progress. But yes, I'm really digging the crochet right now because I think I burnt myself out doing those workplace commissions. So it's nice to just do 
stuff I don't even have to think about because I've done it a million times before. Now it is time for stuff on spindles and wheels, which isn't very much this month. I really haven't done anything on the wheel, so I still just have that one bobbin of the blue, orange, and yellow uh, fiber that I'm spinning. Um, I did spin this mini, mini braid. Uh, it's the Sherwood Forest Merino Pigtail Braid from Greenwood Fiberworks. And this will be up in my shop and I'm calling it Enting because it's like a little ent. Uh, and it's a, a sport weight yarn. And I chain plied it. And I did this on the the raw elm drop spindle. And I like how it turned out. I'm, I'm practicing my chain plying. I think I did pretty good on this one. And I also finished spinning the two ply yarn that I think will be the companion yarn to my Simmons hand spun. Um, so you remember here's Simmons um, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The pink, the white, and the brown. And this is the merino um oh my god i can't remember any words right now the merino mini braid um i forgot what it's called hang on i've got a thing i'll just kick the camera lavender hedgerow is what it's called and here it is Two plied. I haven't washed it or measured it or anything yet. There's green and lavender and blue and brown. Um, just kind of muted. Um, which reminds me of Fitz. It's a lighter weight than the Simmons hand spun though. I don't think I have an accurate gauge of the Simmons hand spun, but I think I'm getting closer to an actual fingering weight. Um, so the Fitz yarn is much thinner than the Simmons yarn. Um, but I'm still gonna sell them as a pair on the shop. Probably not this shop update, but the next one. Because I have to finish this one out and get it all ready to be sold. Um, but I had fun. It was quick. Because I did it this week, um, basically. To do something else other than shop update stuff. Which I will show you in the shop update section. Um, but that's really it for spinning. I didn't really do anything else. I have in my notes, I'll just talk while I'm off camera. I have in my notes <laughs> that I started spinning the Durango mini braid, uh, but here's my drop spindle and here's the mini braid. All I've done is unbraid the braid. I don't think that counts as in progress. Uh, so hopefully that'll be more exciting next month and I really want to get back up and um, work on the wheel some more because I just did not have a chance to do that this month because I'm not great at regulating where my time is spent. So we can move right on to the segment new stuff which I have some new stuff which is very exciting. First thing I have is some uh, Allure Fiber Wash. Uh, in the Woodland Mist scent. Um, I bought this because I've been really just kind of, well, not this month, but last month. I was doing a lot of spinning. Or at least it felt like a lot of spinning. And I have this fiber upstairs that has wool content, but it also has silk and um, camel in it. And I listened to the interview with, I forgot her name, but the person who invented this stuff over at Bijou Basin Ranch um, on Marley Bird's Yarn Things podcast. And she was talking about how different washes affect different fibers. So I wanted something that I knew I'd be able to wash that wool, camel, silk, 
blend in without damaging the camel or the silk. So I got this and it smells good and I'm excited to use it. I haven't used it because it's just been sitting in the bag to talk about on the podcast because that's how I don't lose things for the podcast. As I sequester them away and do not look at them. It's really quite something. I also got stop talking to the table, talk to the camera. Uh, I got an order from Hilltop Cloud over in the UK. Where did it go? I was really looking for for a uh, wraps per inch guide, and this one has, you know, it has a little notch to measure the wraps per inch, and it has little guides for what weight that is, and also the card at the bottom, you can lay your yarn across it and get a kind of idea of where the wraps per inch is, so you can get an idea of the weight of the yarn. And that's primarily what I went shopping for when I went to the Hilltop Cloud um, site on Etsy. But they're in the UK, so it's pretty... It's a shipping cost that's not small. So I also bought some BFL Camel Blend Wool. Because why not? And I am excited uh, to spin this. When I get back up to the wheel. Because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a wheel dealio. It's not as soft as I expected it to be, but I imagine it would be pretty warm. BFL and camel. And I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Nope. Now that I've said that, I don't. So I got that from Hilltop Cloud, which and this is this is the only thing out of my stuff in the bag for the podcast that I have actually taken out and used because this has been very helpful uh, in getting some details for my hand spun. Um, I'm going to go hang it up on my wheel or near my wheel upstairs as soon as this podcast is over. So that's very cool. I also sort of bought some yarn. I say sort of because I'm on a yarn diet and I feel like these don't count. Okay. Have I talked about my yarn diet here? I know I have on my blog, but okay. So my yarn diet. I have a lot of stash. Who doesn't have a lot of stash? But I, I have a lot of stash primarily because when I started learning to crochet and to knit, my grandmother, my Aunt Kathy, and my neighbor, and my mom just kind of gave me a bunch of stuff. My grandma had a huge box of yarn that she just gave to me. My Aunt Kathy had two boxes. Of, she gave me a garbage bag full of yarn and then another box full of yarn that she found later that she wasn't going to use, just gave them to me. My neighbor found out I was crocheting, brought down a box of yarn and just gave it to me. And free yarn is great, but a lot of it is acrylic yarn and a lot of it is yarn that I would not have chosen on my own. So as I'm buying yarn, I'm using it. But all this stuff has been sitting there since 2005, 2006, when I really started picking up the craft. So for the past two and a half years, I've put myself on a yarn diet. So I am allowed to buy whatever I want from the New York Renaissance Fair, uh, which is in August, usually. Um, but there's usually a gap. So I say September, but I really mean the New York Renaissance Fair because one of the silk dyers sometimes has yarn. But that's really the only place the New York Renaissance Fair I buy it. But September-ish. August, September. Through January, I can buy whatever I want. All the local yarn events, 
happen at that time. There's a yarn crawl with the local yarn shops. There's a farmer's market that has a yarn day. There's the New England Fiber Festival up in Massachusetts. There was Stitches East, but that's not there this year. So my mom and I are probably gonna do a our own fiber crawl or our own yarn crawl through as many local yarn shops as we can. That's what we say we're going to do. We'll see how that actually pans out. But so I can buy whatever I want from September through January. Cause January is my birthday. So all the way through then, but February to August, I can only buy yarn. If someone has commissioned me for a project, it is for something for the shop. And I will waffle about it if I find sock yarn on sale for less than a dollar at Joann's. Because I know I'll use sock yarn. Um, but those are my only three conditions for buying yarn from February till August. That being said, No Makers had an update where she had Avengers mini skeins. Come on. <laughs> I feel like mini skeins don't count, right? They don't count against my yarn diet. Because I am eventually going to cast on one of those Cozy Memories blankets. And I really wanted the Avengers mini skeins. So there's... I'm hoping I get all these colors right. There's a couple where I'm not sure, but... There's Captain America. There is... Oops. Hawkeye. I just curl them up, so... I'm pretty sure that's Hawkeye. There is Iron Man. There is Black Widow. Oh, I'm dropping all my minis. There is a Hulk Smash. Oh my god. I'm incapable of holding these minis. I'm just dropping them. I'm pretty sure this is Thor. It's either Thor or Ultron. I'm not sure which is which. I want to say this is Thor because it's a brighter red and he has a red cape. But this one might be Thor. Thor or Ultron, and then Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. And she had a big update where she updated with these mini skeins, and I needed the Avengers desperately. I also, because I hadn't bought yarn in a long time, Got a grab bag of mini skeins from No Makers. Um, I don't know what colorways these are. They didn't come labeled. Here we go. And this one is on her sparkly base, Sparkle Gnome. So I'm excited about those. And because I could, I picked up the Easter set because those were gonna get out of the shop pretty soon. It's a, a blue, a yellow, a pink, and a, I think that's the Little Bunny Foo Foo colorway. Does it say? Yes, it does on this package that you can see. <laughs> but yeah, this Little Bunny Foo Foo. I figured I might as well pick that up too, since it was limited edition and Easter was ending that week. I think it was Good Friday when the shop update happened. I also participated in a mini skein swap with Kristen from Volan Vine Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast. 
she sent me a lovely package with a card and some goodies and a pin. Let's see. Reflections are hard. Okay, there we go. A little oh, focus. Eh, it lost it. A little Yarngasm podcast pin. And here are the minis she sent me. She included a list. This one's one of hers. This is the Wicked colorway. But uh, I haven't actually spent time matching her descriptions and everything to the actual yarns. So I'm not entirely sure which ones are which right now, but there's this one. There's this one. And I'm sure I'll talk about them um, when I actually start my Cozy Memories blanket. Focus. This one. This one. So that was exciting. And since we're talking minis, these next ones aren't new, but I figured I'd show you what I've gathered from my own stash um, and put in a bag to eventually be part of my Cozy Memories blanket when I start it. So far it's in my Star Trek experimental bag. And these are kind of haphazard because I have the actual labels attached to them. Here's some Patton's Croy socks. Here's some Merry Little Lamb green hand spun. I haven't seen them for a long time. They used to have a booth at the Connecticut Renaissance Fair every year because they would kettle dye while they were there. Um, but they haven't been there in years and their website is broken. So I don't know if they just stopped doing it or what, but I have some of the green hand spun from them. I have all that is left from my 100 Ravens Rohan yarn. Some more Patton's Croy socks. There was a Christmas a couple of years ago where I made pretty much everyone in my family socks. So I have... This is Premier Yarns. Deborah Norville collection. I'm just chucking mini skeins on the floor. Um, I think this is also Premier Socks. This is some Shibu. The last of the Mermaid Tales. Some No Makers Mustache Manifesto. This is a part of the, what was it, 2013 Steampunk Yarn Club with um, No Makers and Tangerine Designs. The very last of some uh, hand dyed yarn from the silk dyer I was talking about at the New York Renaissance Fair. Don't actually know what the yarn content of this is because their yarn dyeing was kind of an afterthought because they mostly dye silk and they just thought one year, eh, we have all this dye left over, let's throw some yarn in it. So they did. And it's actually been a good seller for them, so I'm excited about it. Here's some Red Heart, Heart and Soul. And again, I'll go over these in more detail when I actually start that blanket. And here's some robot, robot patina from that steampunk club. And those are all the, the minis I've collected for myself. I do have some minis that are up for swap. I do have an entry up in the Yarngasm mini swap thread and the Peggy Mae Yarns podcast mini, sw mini skein swap thread. I think I said all those words correctly. Not sure. 
But um, right now it's US shipping only until I get a couple more paychecks because shipping overseas can be expensive and I don't want to send things first class overseas. I don't know if international viewers know this, but there there's different tiers of the US postal system. There's first class, there's, um, and now I've forgotten, priority and express. Express is the most expensive and it's the fastest. First class for domestic and domestic US and Canada, it's, it's cheap. It's usually for a small package, it's $3 around there and it'll get to its destination within a week, even in Canada. I don't know, our customs um, border crossing mail systems agree, so it doesn't really take that long to send things to Canada. But anywhere else in the world, <laughs> anywhere else in the world, sending a first class international item. I've sent one to Greenland, to England, to Australia, to, I think, Germany, through my Etsy shop, and we've all run into the same problem. With a first class order, you get a tracking number, but you can only track that package in the United States. Once it leaves the US borders, that tracking number is useless. I live in Connecticut. Everything international from Connecticut gets shipped out of JFK Airport, airport in New York which is like a three or four hour drive. So that tracking number is useful for a day. They even say on the website for first class international orders, it can, it can take six to eight weeks to arrive at its destination. Everything I've sent overseas has taken eight weeks. Eight weeks, that's two months. <laughs> even to populated, well, you know, Sending things to London takes eight weeks for my first class orders. I, I don't know why that is. So you can't track it. It takes eight weeks. <laughs> you can't file a claim until something like 90 days. And there's no way for the country that it's being shipped to to verify where this package is, because that tracking number is useless. It's a United States tracking number. You can't use it to check it if it's going, if, if it eventually ends up in the hands of Royal Mail or wherever. It's useless. So, my standard now is the priority mail flat rate boxes. Because priority mail, you get a tracking number that works from point A to point B, no matter where it's going. You can look and see where it is. And it generally takes around two weeks to get there. So, if you're interested in yarn swapping, check out uh, Kristen's thread on the Yarngasm podcast on Ravelry. Check out uh, the Peggy May yarn podcast thread on Ravelry. Right now, it's domestic shipping only until I can you know, fit it in my budget to do priority mail packages to international folks. Uh, that is also why you'll see the international shipping on my shop is so high, because it's a fixed rate box. Because otherwise the shipping is useless and you never know when you're gonna get your stuff. Sorry, I get really ranty about international shipping because I don't get that many international orders and it's always a pain because of first class. Like, first class shipping a package to, say, London, probably nine to ten dollars. But it's gonna take eight weeks. So instead I have to do a flat rate box, which is, I think if I go into the post office, it's twenty-five dollars <laughs> to ship it to London, to get there in a reasonable time span and trackable. So, it's a problem. I have feelings about international postage. <laughs> but yes, that was a really long segment of new stuff, which was mostly not even new stuff. Now for stuff for Etsy. This is going to be a long segment this week. 
I feel like I need to rush everything so I can get everything in without it being a million years long. But I'm doing an Etsy shop update this weekend. By the time this video goes up, the shop will be full of things. So I'm gonna show you all the things since my shop's been mostly empty since Christmas. Um, and I will try to be as quick as possible so I don't bore you all to tears. In a previous video, I showed off the packaging for um, my stitch markers because I changed the packaging. Oh, dropping things. And now I've got pretty much all my stitch markers made for this shop update. I have these firebender stitch markers. Everything's nerdy, by the way, so be aware. I have Batman and Robin stitch markers. Focus. That's mostly in focus. There we go. I have waterbender stitch markers. The waterbender and the firebender are the only beaded ones I have right now. Because I have a lot of beads for some reason as well. Here are my Superman stitch markers. Here are my Star Trek stitch markers. Come on, camera. Do the thing. Can you, can, can you focus? Let's try that again. Oh, apparently it doesn't want to focus. Focus. There we go. Here's some supernatural stitch markers. Here is the gentleman set of stitch markers. There's top hats, monocles, um, pocket watches, mustaches, and bow ties. Here are my Star Wars stitch markers. Here's the Deathly Hallows stitch markers. Sorry about the glare on the packaging, but there's nothing I can do about it. Here's some Captain America stitch markers. Focus. Thank you. And yes, I am throwing them on the floor. That is the sound you're hearing. Here's my shield stitch markers. And I still have, although I'm not really making any new ones, some lemon and sheep. It is the freakish lemon and his friend the angry sheep. Although there are some in there where it's uh, the fancy sheep. The fancy sheep has a top hat. All my stitch markers except for the firebender and waterbenders are uh, shrinky dinks with a seal over them put on jump rings if you're interested in what they're made of. I also have in the shop these fancy sheep buttons where it's the sheep in a top hat and a monocle. So my big seller in my shop, which I sold a lot of over November and December for Christmas, are my embroidered moleskin notebooks. Uh, I use these personally for um, knitting notes and things. But there is the Deathly Hallows, which I changed the color of. It used to be gold, but it didn't really show up well against the cardboard. There's the White Tree of Gondor. There's Robin. There's Batman. There's Superman. There is a Death Eater. Though I'm thinking of discontinuing that one because it's really hard to do. And those don't really sell as well as the others. It's a Penny Puppa Dog. Hello. You wanna say hello? Do a, leave that alone. You wanna say hi to YouTube? Yeah. 
You want to say hello? Oh, say hello to the camera. Penny says hello. Penny, look at the camera. She's not really all that interested. She just woke up from a nap. There's the Devil's Trap from Supernatural. There is the Angel banage Banishment from Supernatural. I now have dog hair all over myself. I have your hair all over me, Penny. Here is a TARDIS. I did have Doctor Who stitch markers, but I'm going to redo the designs on those because some of these designs are hard on my hands. There's the Doctor Who. Because I had stitch markers that basically had the TARDIS and that Doctor Who logo, but it's really hard to draw those straight lines. I need to work on some revamps on those. Here's the Galactic Empire. Here is the Rebel Alliance. Are you still sleepy? Go back to bed. Here is the engineer from Star Trek. Here is Command from Star Trek. Here is Science from Star Trek. Here's Captain America. Here is Spider-Man. And here is S.H.I.E.L.D. I do have four new designs for the individual moleskin notebooks. There is Captain Marvel. They're mostly yellow. There's Wonder Woman. There's Ms. Marvel. And there's the Black Widow. So those are brand new that will be added to the shop this week. I also have uh, packs since there was, you know, some themes. There's the Star Wars pack, which has both the Rebel and the Empire. There is the Marvel pack, which has Captain America, Spider-Man, and S.H.I.E.L.D. There is the DC pack, which is Superman, Batman, and Robin. There is the Doctor Who pack, which has the Doctor Who logo and the TARDIS. There's the Harry Potter pack, which has the Deathly Hallows and the Death Eater. What are you doing, Penny? You can't go up on my bed. It's full of stuff. And there's the Supernatural pack, which has the Devil's Trap, the Angel Banishment, and the, um, the Anti-Possession tip tattoo, which I reworked for this time around too. I can open this up and show you. I might start selling that one individually, but usually it's a part of this. Did I not do a Star Trek? Apparently I didn't do a Star Trek pack. Uh, that'll be in the next update because uh, I in the Star Trek pack I do the three command engineer and science and I also do a variation on the command where it has the avocado green that Captain Kirk wears but apparently that wasn't on my list to do and I just noticed it just now I also have little notions pouches up on that will be up in the shop. I have these teeny little three inch ones, Spider-Man, Superman, and some Batman. And I have these like five inch ones. There's some Superman, Spider-Man, Another Spider-Man. 
two Batmans, and two Avengers. And new to the shop this update are four project bags. Here is a Captain America bag. It's like my Star Trek bag, but a little shorter. So you can fit a small shawl project or socks or something. Here's the Avengers. Here's Star Trek with the Enterprise fabric inside. Here is the owls I showed you on the last show with the kind of robin's egg blue inside. And here's some gray owls. I really liked how this one turned out with the bottom. I could only find one fat quarter of this owl fabric and it wasn't enough for full sides of both panels. It's got the same pattern on the bottom in the inside. The Avengers one just has an off-white fabric inside. And then there's all the hand spun that I put up in the shop to see if anybody wants it before I decide if I want to do anything with it. Um, there's a lot of it. <laughs> some of it is stuff you've seen on the show before. Some of it is uh, older. So some of it might be retired after this run. Here is the Lollipop Guild. I Kool-Aid dyed this. This is my first dyeing experiment. Uh, and all the details for the hand spun will be up in the shop, but that'll take too long to go through each one individually. I'm just going to show you what they look like, and you can look them up in the shop later. So that's the Lollipop Guild. This is Smog or Smaug, the dragon from The Hobbit. This is Samath Naur, which I showed on this podcast. This is the Tesseract. This is X-34. This is Bard. These are Delirium from the Sandman comics. So you get some good color in there. It's a little darker than what's showing up on my screen right now. I don't know how the actual video will turn out, but it's a little bit darker than what I'm showing you. Under the Sea, which is sort of a gradient for that one ply. It goes green, blue, purple. Menomina. Anduin. Oops. Dylan. The last son of Krypton. Oh, my hand. You don't want to look at my hand. You want to look at the yarn. And then the dreaming, which is the sparkly mini I showed you 
on this podcast and Trapper Keeper. And like I said, where did it go? I've lost it now. Oh, it's buried. And Enting will be up. And I do have a bunch of minis for, whoops, the rest of that hand spun. Those will all be up there in little mini listings. But I won't go through all of them individually. Oh, check that back in the box. And I think that's it. I think that's everything that the shop will be updated for. For? With? Words are hard. So now it's time for other stuff. Stuff that I am watching. I mainlined the Netflix Daredevil series. And I really enjoyed it. I watched it in two days. I would have watched it in one, but I started it Friday night. And then... Did a bunch Saturday morning. No, three days. Did a bunch Saturday morning. And then went to tabletop day at my friend's house. And then I slept over my sister's. And then I finished the series as soon as I got home on Sunday. So technically three days. But it would have been one day if I didn't start it Friday night. But it was really good and I really enjoyed it. I'm also catching up on season four, I think it is, of Lost Girl. Which has been on Netflix for a while. But I haven't gotten around to watching it. So I've been watching that. And I've been really into... Sorry, the dog made a noise. Uh, I've been really into watching Ken Burns documentaries recently. So I've seen The Dust Bowl, which I liked. And I've seen part of The War, which is really interesting. And has a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't even know happened because the American public school system is not very good at details. At least where I went to school. Uh, stuff I am reading. I'm still reading Night Watch by Terry Pratchett. Um, which is good, but I've been distracted, so I haven't really sat down and read a whole chunk of it. And stuff I'm playing, I'm still playing Lego Lord of the Rings. Um, but I'm, I think, 90% done, so... I'll have that finished soon, which I'm excited about, because then I can play more LEGO games. And podcast recommendations. For knitting related, I'm going to recommend the Fluffy Fibers podcast this week. Um, I've forgotten her name. It's gone. You've seen how this video's gone. I, my ability to think is completely gone. I love her podcast. She's French. And um, I love listening to her take on the different yarns and the patterns and her sewing. And it's, it's all very interesting. Uh, you can find Fluffy Fibers uh, in audio form uh, on whatever podcast aggregator you use. iTunes, Stitcher, I think. Um, Pocket Cast. Pocket Cast is the app that I use. It costs money, but I have it on iOS and Android so I can sync, keep synced up with all my podcasts no matter what device I have to listen. So I really enjoy Pocket Casts. But she's on there for audio. And for video, it's Fluffy Fibers here on YouTube. And for non non-knitting related... Uh, it, it's a good choice for this week, since all of the nerdy things you just saw. It is the Major Spoilers podcast. Doesn't always spoil you. Don't worry. I know the title is Major Spoilers, but there is potential for spoilers. But it is a... The Majorspoilers.com website is for news, reviews, movies, video games, comic books. It is basically where I go for any news on anything that I want to hear more about in in the nerdy realm. They're great with that stuff. 
and I have a podcast, the Major Spoilers Podcast, which I believe is weekly, um, reviewing comic books, talking about movies and TV shows they've seen. Last episode I listened to, they were talking about the Daredevil series, and they had an interview with a psychology professor about the psychology of superheroes, and it's it's all really interesting stuff, and it's really fun to listen to. They have a whole bunch of other shows on the Major Spoilers Podcast Network, um, that I'm sure are great, but I'm buried as it is. I know I've listened to pieces of them, because a lot of them started out as like little segments on the Major Spoilers podcast, but then branched out into their own shows. But uh, it's really great podcast. Um, the podcast itself is more review type stuff, less on news because it's weekly, but the site is definitely a worth worth a checking out if you are into nerdy things. They're great. That's about it for the show this week. Um, but if there's anything you want me to talk about on these shows, um, I know people have made comments about the stuff behind me. If you have any questions about the stuff behind me, there's a lot of Legos. Um, Feel free to put some questions in the comments or message me on Ravelry. Um, yeah, if there's anything you want me to talk about, any questions you want me to answer, I think I'm losing my voice, go ahead and leave a comment. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, this is episode three, so... Let me know what you want to see, other than the piles of things that I have all around the floor now. Yeah. Cleaning up is going to be fun. So that's it, I guess. Uh, remember that the show notes can be found over at my blog at freakishlemon.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Ravelry, Pinterest if you want to. So that's it. I'm going to end this now. Goodbye. <laughs>